G'day guys and welcome to day number four of the Rohan Solo series for Shark Bay. Now, I've already recorded an intro for this one today, but the weather has changed so dramatically from how I woke up to what it is now that I'm actually going to do this all over again. Oh, I think my head might be in the danger zone here on the edge of the awning. I was pondering with myself whether or not to move campsite today and then I woke up and to the west was just these heavy rain clouds coming over, had a heap of rainfall onto the awning, I was filming it, it was looking like it was going to be a bit of a sad day and then that just all passed straight over and it's turned sublime. So that's made my decision easy. What I'm doing today, I'm going to move from Herald Bight and I'm going to move over to Bottle Bay, which I've never ever done before. But the reason why I'm doing it is because I don't want to get complacent and just stay here the entire time. It's like, you know, how do you know that you don't love another place more when you've never left? the first one you're at so even though I love this one to death and I think it's probably the best spot I've ever been to there's no telling what Bottle Bay is going to be like for me so you're going to see firsthand my first experience there right so I'm just going to hitch the trailer on now Okay, so that's everything hitched on. So the door is over there in the water still, but where I want to recover the boat and retrieve it is over there. So what we'll do, everything's packed away. We're gonna drive over there first, line the boat trailer up, and then we're gonna walk back over here, walk out, jump in the tinny, and then drive on over, and then see how this solo retrieval goes. Cause it's gonna be my first time ever doing a solo beach retrieve, I think as well. It's gonna be interesting, but it's all learning and uh, hopefully it goes all right. Okay, so I'm walking out right now and it's all sweet to where I am, but I've got about, because of where I had to anchor my boat to keep it in sand, I've got about 10 meters to get past over the back of these rocks here. So I'm currently walking on like these rocky flats and obviously the water's getting quite high now. It's up to my chest. I've got the camera in my hand. It's not waterproof because I've got all my mounts on it. So I need to make this last little leg here through the sand. So there's a chance my chin's gonna be under the water or I'm gonna have to stop filming or I'm gonna have to swim with one hand up in the sky. Make sure I don't wet my microphone or anything, but oh, it's getting up into the armpits now. But yeah, this is what you have to do. So this is how much the tide can change because in a couple of hours when I'm walking out here, this is only going to be ankle deep. So, you know, you've got to allow for this sort of stuff and this is the way you got to do it. But I'm getting there, I'm getting there. All right, I'm going to chuck the camera in the boat now and then jump on over myself and we'll get over. Okay, and we're in. <laughs> oh man, what a feeling. This recovery is going to be fun now. This part's going to be quite hard to record properly because I'm going to have to switch camera angles and stuff a bit. I've only got the one camera, but. Hopefully I capture it well and it all goes smoothly. I'm pretty much just going to drive the nose of the boat straight up into the trailer because I think the water's deep enough to allow me to do it. So that's what I'll do and then I can probably just dry winch it on from where it will be. So I'll sit the camera here. It may fall, hopefully it doesn't. Fell like I said it would, but anyway, we're here now. So I'm just lifting the motor up, 
boat straight on. If I'm quick enough, I can reverse back and we can winter up. So, just like that. I'll grab this little mount out of here. I'll tuck the GoPro back on the back of the ute again and we'll, we'll get her up. All right, so I'm just gonna reverse back a touch. what we call a dry winch so there's not going to be any water under the boat the winch is going to be doing all the heavy lifting works pretty well but just make sure you got an oversized winch to the right to the weight rating of your boat because like I did it with my other winch in my last series that I did uh, and I was at another place close to Lehman and I ended up breaking the winch because it couldn't handle the weight of the boat dry being pulled up sort of only made when you're at a jetty and there's water floating it but this should work well Success. All right, guys, so this is where my story ends here at Harold Bright for the second time around ever, and just as much as the first time, I've loved every single second of it and I love it so much that I'm a little bit nervous about trying to move spot today. But I hope it works out okay and I hope it pays off. The tinny's loaded back up. Everything's back on board with the dory. One last look at this place. All right, so I've just managed to get myself bogged while trying to come out of Herald Bot. It was never gonna let me go that easy, but what's actually just happened is this this older couple, a couple of grey nomads in a big, uh, I think they got a big Mercedes Sprinter van, must be 4x4, four four. they're coming through and he's just hit me up and he's had a good yarn to me, he said oh, I'll pull you out. I said I'll be alright, he said no, no, I'll do it for you, I'll do it for you, so he's real keen on it. It's just this section here that's boggy, and then if he gets me through, back onto this harder stuff here, I'm going to give him some pink snapper as a bit of a reward from what I got the other day, because I love good help and I love good people, he's good for a yarn, so I'm going to leave the camera on the tripod and I'll film it. He'll pull me through, I'll make his day, he'll make mine, and we'll be on our way. Alright, there's me, there's this fella. Oh yeah, that's a weapon. Oh, that's a weapon for sure. Oh, the D-Max looks like an ant compared to that thing. That is ripper, this sort of stuff honestly makes my day. So, I'm going to get a good yarn out of this bloke, he's going to get some fish out of it. And he's going to help me out. What a good thing. Try that? Yeah, we'll give it a crack, mate. Good Better off having a bit of cracks at first, you know? Yeah. That's really good. There's a pin there. Do you have a spot for that one for a second? Sorry. I've got lots of spots. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get pretty much to where you yeah, are. Well, this is it. I mean, so well, I'll, I'll get going um, because you've got an anchor at the back. Yeah. So I'll take you right to the top. I think we should be pretty sweet. I'll have to, I'll chuck my max tracks under the back wheels. I'll just watch the strap and as it slowly tensions, I'll just start giving it to it as you'll... Make sure you put your top, your front wheels right eh? Yeah, yep. Let's go. What a ripper bloke. So tensioning the front strap. I'll go second. Yep, go, 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 go. I think we're sweet already anyway. Walk in the park. Here's your arm. Um, 
gentlemen. Cryovax, mate, I caught that about two days ago. Fantastic, That's thank been... you muchly. Hey, Thanks. we were so running out of food in there. No, mate, <laughs> enjoy. This is magic. Thanks for that. Enjoy. Jurian's the name? Ah, uh, Rowan, mate. It's not an Australian name. <laughs> no, it, so, I'm Australian. Um, parents? Uh, my dad's side's English Burmese, and then my mum's side's Australian, so. Because I'm, here, so look, I'm Dutch, and that sounds a bit, um, yeah, that sort of, <laughs> if you, of Rohan. If you, look up on, uh, if you look up on YouTube, mate, Rohan Black, Rohan Solo is what I call this your, series. Your, your surname is Black? Yeah. Well, my surname is Black, but in Dutch it's called Swats. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, there you go, eh? <laughs> unreal. <laughs> this is a unreal. And her name, her surname was Vissa. What's that one, man? Fishing, you know, so, yeah. That could be my channel name, mate, Black Fishing. Yeah, you spent a bit of dough on, your, on, on ink, mate. Yeah, a bit of dough on ink as well. Got a bit of dough on everything, mate. Spend it while you can, eh? This is it. I'm just going to shoot over to Bottle Bay now, then just start okay. fishing back yep. up because yeah. that's where I got those from, oh, close, closer to that side. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I'll that's even, fantastic. I'll even show you the photo actually of the fish you'll be eating, mate. Oh, you actually, you took a photo of him. Yeah. Ah. I took a um, father and son out with me. Oh, okay. Um, that were camped just down from me, so these are the two that I got. Oh, fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Pink snapper Absolutely there. fantastic. Oh, shivers, he's got a row of them. And then I got, and then I got the father and the son on too. So they got a couple as well. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Everyone was happy. Yeah, it would be. <sighs> Good luck with the uh, the rest of your travels. Enjoy the fish. Hey, that's news, isn't it? <laughs> Bert, people pulling out an Izut suit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blame the boat, mate. We'll blame the boat. Hey, that's all it is. They act like an actor, mate. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you again. No worries. All right, guys, that's me. So if that wasn't some feel-good content, I don't know what is, because that was just such a cool little experience, seeing that guy. Yeah, I could have got myself out there, but he was happy to help. It's good for a yarn. It's nice to meet people like that. And then I've made his day by giving them probably about a kilo of pink snapper that I cried back from a couple nights ago. They're super chuffed. He even said, oh, we're getting low on food. And uh, yeah, so I couldn't be more wrapped with that, so I'm gonna go with the show. Give him a wave. Cheers, guys. See ya. <laughs> How good is that? One's a company, two's a cracker, three's a party coming, move around, click. Fresh, fresh when the school is out, when the booze is up, when the sun is down, click. Enjoy the ride, got some pillows in the Chevy. I've just pulled into one of these little bays here. That's how I'll leave the boat there. And then probably what I'll do is park the D-Max at my little campsite right here. And then as I need to, I can just come and go, hooking the boat up and just keep towing it straight in and out of there. So got this cool little beach access track here. I'm gonna walk down in a minute and have a bit of a suss, see if this is actually the place that I wanna be. And then I'll work out how easy it's gonna be to solo beach launch the boat and retrieve it every day because that's what I'm going to be up to unless I can find people that want to come fishing with me. Alright so my first observation this is definitely much more of a beachy beach you know it's got the proper beachy feel you can see the deeper water there's actually waves dumping on the shore here it's got a whole different feel to Herald Blight. Herald Blight is way calmer a lot more secluded far less busy um, so it's probably a lot I already prefer over Herald Park, but that's not to say that I'm not going to fall in love with this place as well. So I'm just going for a walk down the beach. I'm just going to suss out where the uh, boat launching area is and see if it's actually going to be doable for me to do it on my own or not. I've just come along and done a bit of a compaction test here. So right here, you've got these uh, bollards here where you're not allowed to drive up through there, but this is the actual boat launching area here. And the sand, it's about 10 times harder here than it is back there. Thankfully, because I was so worried that I'm not going to be able to do a beach launch here, but I actually will be able to manage it now. This is just giving me full confidence. Yeah, rock solid all the way through here. So I should just be able to throw the boat off 
I'll have to anchor it in shallow real quickly and then drive the ute out and then it's going to be a real, real pain. It's going to make for some very interesting content, but it'll be manageable. A few people over there fishing, a bit of beach fishing. There's another boat further down. I wouldn't mind seeing how they launch if they do, but that doesn't look like the spot to do it. Alright guys, so I've decided to jump in the ute to touch base on this next bit of infill that I'm going to give you. So pretty much I've driven from Herald Bight to Bottle Bay, that was a pretty interesting drive. People were bogged, it was very boggy for me as well with the, the ute and the boat behind me. Um, definitely not an easy track getting through, it's quite slow. I was actually in low range for quite a large portion of it. But I got through it fine. I had plenty of room to move as well with my tire pressure as well, worst come to worst. Uh, I've got a nice little spot here that I'll show you in a second where I'm just gonna put out my camp mat. So I've got like a three by three mesh mat, roll the swag out, put my chair on that, anything that I need to keep right here for me to have a decent camp. But I'm not actually gonna put the awning or the side walls out or anything over the next three days while I'm here. The reason being that because I need to keep moving, and driving back to where you launch the boat and coming back again, you can't just moor your boat here because the ocean's too volatile. That means I need to keep the ute free to move and come and go. So I'll have like a separate little campsite, but I'm not gonna have any shade. So probably what's gonna happen is this hat's gonna come off. This one's gonna come back on. That's my awning for the next three days. There's quite a few people around. So what I'm gonna do is as I get around and bump into a few people, I might hit up the old uh, Joe Blow, anyone who's around and just see if they wanna come out for a fish with me because the water's actually quite, you know, it's a beach, like it's proper beach launch. It's not like in the bay over at Herald Bar. I don't know why this is called Bottle Bay. It should be called Bottle Beach because that's exactly how it acts, whereas Herald Bite is more like a bay where it comes in dead calm. You can drop your boat in like you saw before, just float it out, no, nothing to worry about. It's not gonna disappear on you. Whereas here, it's like you gotta put the boat in and then you gotta be on the money, getting your ute out of the sand, your four wheel drive, because that's gonna be hard enough on its own with two people, let alone one. And then in, in amongst all that, I've gotta try to jump out of the ute, anchor the boat so it doesn't drift off with the swell quickly and the wind, jump back in the ute, park that, jump back in the boat and get out. So that's what I'm gonna be doing if no one wants to come fishing with me. And I will make it happen, but that's what's gonna make this awesome is that I'll make it work. And if I don't, well, you're gonna get some awesome footage out of it because it's gonna be a very expensive mistake. <laughs> so, what I did a minute ago is I walked all the way up to the beach to suss out where you launch your boat there and I did like a little time lapse walking back so I'm going to play that right now as I talk to you guys. You can see just how picturesque the terrain is along here. It's so beautiful but what you're missing in that time lapse is the howling southerly wind that was coming through. In saying that, so today should be the worst of the weather and that gives me a bit of confidence because I feel like I could still launch the boat in what was on offer just there. So last night... Or in last episode, I made myself some pizza for dinner. So I've got that for lunch right now, and that's what I'm about to tuck into. And then instead of trying to fish today, I'll unhitch the boat and we're gonna drive up to the Cape because I've never driven to the Cape before. I've got a drone with me, still don't know how to fly it. It won't link to my phone, so I'm probably not gonna be able to stand that up and get these picture-perfect drone shots that I dreamed about before I come up here. But I'm still gonna go get some cool footage nonetheless, and it's gonna be worth the look. And then from tomorrow onwards, probably tomorrow morning when I wake up, it should be calm with the wind. Get straight in the water, start fishing, and then the action's gonna be jam packed from there. So I've just hit the fork. There's a sign there that says, Cape Perrin that way, Skipjack Point this way. We're gonna go check out Skipjack Point initially because I feel like that's the spot I'm gonna spend the least amount of time at. It's just a lookout that overlooks the water. But yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool to see it from the top this time around. So where I was camping just earlier is right over that way. I think somewhere right there, that beach. Oh, my finger in the lens there. Right there is where I was camping. Now we're up here, so we were actually traveling all this way with the boat 
to come fish further over this side of the peninsula. So that's why I decided to move camp. That was the big decision maker for me, was to come closer to where I need to be able to fish because at this time of year, it's a closed season for pink snapper inside of this Eastern Gulf Bay here. So we're over this way and I'll be able to fish whatever I want over there without restriction. A few people fishing down the bottom there. I don't know how they got down there. Oh yeah, they've walked all the way from over at the Cape there. Just having a read of these information boards here. How's this? So manta rays, despite growing up to nine meters wide and weighing two tons, that is huge. One hand, let's go. Let's have a look. Please be, oh, you're kidding me. Look at that, that's painful. 24 megabytes out of 330. So I might be making my dinner up here, I reckon. Grab a chair, get real comfy. Maybe even roll the swag. I'll go back and get the swag. This is what you gotta do for a bit of reception to fly a bloody drone. All right, bugger it. So what I'm gonna do, instead of waiting for this to download because I've got 300 megabytes left and I've only done 30 in about probably literally 20 minutes, I'm gonna climb down here, I'm gonna drive over to Cape Perrin, I'm gonna try find reception over there, although it's not gonna be as high as this and there's not gonna be a big tower over there. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'm not gonna stress about it anymore. I just wanna enjoy my time away and get off technology as much as I can. So even just coming to my phone before is stressing me out already. You know, I'm not too bad with it in my day-to-day -day life, but just being out here for the last four days so far, not having been on my phone for pretty much a single minute of it apart from taking photos has been the best thing ever and I want to keep that going so let's get over there I'll we'll see if it works out if it doesn't so be it <sighs> see ya All right, it's getting a little bit chilly now, so I donned on the jacket again, but to my surprise, for some reason, I thought this would be like Skipjack Point where I'd come over here and I'd be on a big cliff again, but I should have known better considering I've fished around here just the other day. But it actually comes down to an awesome little beach here. Come down on those rocks. Check that out. And this is exactly why I want to get this damn drone flying up in the sky, because imagine this with a drone shot. All you proper YouTubers out there that are the real deal, you'd know exactly what you're doing right now. I've got no bloody idea. Just winging it. It's gonna be another series without drone shots, but that's okay, because it does not get much finer than this regardless of what camera you're slinging in front of it. How's I just had this entire sunset and this place to myself? Keeping in mind it's the middle of the school holidays right now as, as well and it's the mid-northern part of Western Australia, so a lot of people flock to here in July to keep warm, all of that, and this is still how barren it is right now. There's hardly anyone around. Everybody that I've spoken to is just beautiful. I'm having the best time, and you know, for the next few days to close this out, I just hope it all goes perfectly. But let's get out of here. Let's get back towards where we're camping, suss things out, and keep going. I don't think that was a kangaroo joey, I think that was a, 
I don't think it's a wallaby either. I think they call them some sort of like 50-50. They are like a wallaroo maybe, I think. I actually think they might be called a wallaroo. I don't know. I could be completely wrong and it might just be a standard kangaroo, but I'm sure there's some mixed breed thing that they call a wallaroo or something along those lines. Anyway, that's pretty cool. We're coming back down to Bottle Bay now. I'm just going to drive on down the beach and have a look at both ends to suss out how I feel about beach launching here tomorrow. So when the water's like that, now that's my kind of launching style. This is where I was earlier. It still drops off quite deep here though. But that, I think that's manageable on my own. One thing that stayed real consistent about Shark Bay every, every night I've been here, every time I've visited, is that it always seems to calm off in the afternoons, which like I mentioned, earlier in this episode or maybe one back is that that's very non-typical of western australia at least for the bottom half so normally the wind tends to blow up everything gets worse in the afternoons and you definitely don't want to be fishing but for some reason up here it always just calms off and ends up looking just like this go on that's a good fish that's a that's a good fish there we go i knew it yes all right. Thank you, Lord. Get in there. Yes. Oh, thank you. Open for plants tonight. 